Let's try another problem. First step, let's read the problem. So we're, we're being asked, how much would you be willing to pay uh, now for an investment that was guaranteed to pay $400 at the end of three years and $600 at the end of five years, assuming a, a, a constant interest rate of 12% APR and we're compounding yearly. Now this question is probably not all that realistic. Uh, probably don't have many accounts like this out there. But it's a good example that shows us how to convert future sums of money into a present, uh, total present uh, amount of money that we would need to invest to, to get that, to get there. So this problem, uh, we've already read it, but we're gonna, I'm going to deviate a little bit here for you just to illustrate how we can break these problems down because I think that's a common, uh, common area that people get a little bit confused on. So let's start out this problem rather than write our givens and finds by drawing out our cash flow diagram. Okay, So let's draw a grand cash flow diagram for this entire investment. Now we've got a period here, a total period of five years. So let's break this down. Uh, one, two, three, four, add a little on there, five. Okay, And we'll label this, try to label it clearly. One, two, three, four, and five. That's five year period. What we want to know is we're looking for a certain amount of money, oh, certain amount of money now that we need to invest some a sum P in order to be able to uh, be paid back a total of four hundred dollars at the end of three years. Remember, if we're being paid, that's a positive amount. So we're gonna list four hundred there, and then six hundred dollars in five years. Six hundred dollars in five years. Okay? And then the question is asking us how much would we be willing to pay just to break if we were gonna break even on this investment. Okay? So we're gonna start out, remember we need to put our point of view here, and that's gonna be the investor. Okay? We, re we know now in, in this class that we can break these problems down, and we have to, because the assumption of not having withdrawals or payments isn't met. So let's break this down into two cash flow diagrams that do meet the assumptions. Okay, Remember, it's an additive process. So let's start out with the initial investment here of uh, our initial payback of $400. We're concerned with this component of P. Okay there and we have that initial payback of four hundred dollars. We have one, two, three years time. Okay, that cash flow diagram meets the assumptions uh, the assumptions that we make for our P slash F factor when we uh, know some future sum of money and need to find the present value. Okay. We can also break up the second portion of the problem, like so. Another component of P uh, here, and remember we have five years. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, add a little on here, uh, five years. And at the five year period, we know we're going to receive $600. Okay. So that is the second uh, part of the problem. Remember this right here? is a component of P and that is a component of P and doesn't necessarily represent this total P. So sometimes we like to put P1 and P2 and note that P, our actual investment here, is going to be the sum of P1 and P2 just to keep ourselves straight. Okay. So the, for the first part of the problem, let's write our givens and our finds. The first part of the problem being this part of the problem right here. Okay. So for the first part, we are given a future sum of money, which is $400. We have an interest rate that is a constant 12% APR, and a total number of interest periods for that of three years. And we need to find what is the principal investment. And let's use the notation that we've put over here, over on the far right and call that P1. So for this problem, uh, remember we have, we need to know P given F, I, and N. That means we're going to use the P slash F factor. 
And because we know we need the p slash f factor, we know that the equation is p, and in this case p1, is equal to f multiplied by 1 over 1 plus i to the n. And for this investment, we have $400 multiplied by 1 over 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to the number of interest periods, which is 3. And a total amount of money there is $284.71. Now let's scroll down and deal with the second portion of this problem, the portion of the problem up here. Okay. So for the second portion of the problem, we have a different set of givens and finds. And now I'm actually going to use a different color here uh, to help you all stay uh, on track. Okay. So for the second portion here, down a little bit too far, we have a different set of givens. Okay. And that means we have an F of $600. We scroll up here. Remember, we're dealing with this cash flow diagram right over here. We have $600. We have an I, which is the same as the previous, of 12% APR, 12% per year. And in this case, we have a five-year investment. So five years in the future, we're going to receive this $600. Okay, so we need to make sure we use, a, we use five years. And we need to find the present sum of money that's the equivalent of $600 five years in the future at an interest rate of 12% APR compounded yearly. Okay, same factor, we're given P, P slash F comma I comma N. And the formula for that is P, in this case it's P2. Remember we're dealing with the second portion of the problem. Okay, of $600. So I'll write out the equation one last time for you. Uh, is equal to F times 1 over 1 plus I to the N. Okay, and in this case we have $600 multiplied by 1 over 1 plus 0 0.12 raised to the n, in this case is 5. And that gives us a value of $340.46. Uh, $340 Remember, to get to the final part of this problem, we simply need to add P1 and P2. And in this case, we have a P1 of 284.71 and a P2 of 340.46 and that gives us a total amount of $625.17.